Hey guys and welcome to Words at Scale. So today's topic is very near and dear to me since I do a lot of research myself and I don't have any illusions whether this video is going to be viral. I do think this is a very niche topic but still it is extremely important and I'm happy to share what I know about original research and we'll be using ChatGPT to help us along the way. So what is original research? In my opinion, original research is data that serves people and solves problems. It makes your article unique, not plagiarized, even though you may be using AI. Original research, at least in my world, has to be easy to conduct and easy to scale. So we are not scientists by any means. We are not going to be doing our PhDs and supporting theses. We are here to do quick and dirty <laughs> research, but it has to be helpful. Why do we need original research? It makes your article stand out, as I said. It improves time span and decreases bounce rate. And bounce rate is extremely important for Google. It gives a very strong signal to whether your content is useful. And time span has a direct correlation with ad revenue. So the more a user spends on your page, the more he or she is likely to click on a banner or to an affiliate offer. So this is very important. And last but not least, original research and data you present attracts organic backlinks. So you don't have to beg for backlinks. You don't have to do guest posting. If you've done everything correctly, you will attract backlinks. And as you can see, or you cannot, <laughs> Uh, in my perfect article checklist, which is available to my patrons, I have a section related to original research. So this means that I need to have at least one high quality, unique AI generated image. I need at least one data set added to the table and one unique video to be recorded related to the article. These are not strictly all origin, fall under the original research umbrella, but this one does. And this has helped me a lot in the past to gain some quality backlinks. And as you can see, there are different ways you can use or express data in your original research. You can use tables, you can use surveys, graphs, scoring cards, and infographics. But in this video today, we'll talk about expert opinions, posts and service and data visualization as the three main ones. And if the video does well, I may actually explore all of the different ways you can do original research. So I'll be using ChatGPT today and I'll be using the WebChat Chrome extension that lets ChatGPT fetch new information. I will be using Facebook <laughs> and it's Facebook groups and I'll be using Google Trends, but most of all I'll be using my brain and I suggest you do as well. So how can we leverage the power of ChatGPT? Let's head over to ChatGPT and as you, as you can see, I have my web ChatGPT extension ready and plugged in. And so one of the subscribers uh, told me not to use the dog snitch since he's in one. So I will be using crypto and uh, I'm pretty sure he su suggested that as well. So we'll be using three prompts that are going to be available uh, in my ChatGPT prompt library, but you don't have to get access to that since I'll be using them quite overtly uh, in this video. So the first one, will help us with expert opinions. And again, expert opinions is a very umbrella term. So since we are using Bitcoin as an example, I thought that one of the bigger events for Bitcoin is Bitcoin halving, which is going to happen in 2024. So I will ask GPT to list top five price predictions for Bitcoin after 2024 halving event with references. So let's try that. Many experts predict one Bitcoin could be worth more than $100,000 in 2025. The next Bitcoin halving event is expected to take place in 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are getting some predictions here.
and these are not all going to be relevant and you would need to check the links and if you have this web chat GPT extension ready they should be uh, okay so the first one talks about the beacon having and the second one is valid as far as I can see okay nice some graphs also so we can use this as an example when I was preparing for the video, I got a slightly different output, which I will be showing you in the end, but you can regenerate this as many times as you can. And your end goal is to collect five to 10 different opinions and expert different opinions and projections to use in your article. So this is research method number one. And again, in a few minutes I'll be showing how I would go about visualizing that. So approach number two is to run a poll or a survey in one of the Facebook groups. And we need some ideas for that. So the prompt would be list five ideas for a survey on a topic of Bitcoin halving. That would help many people. So idea number one is to survey the miners survey that posts miners on their expectations for the impact of the halving which is important since the price of bitcoin depends on the mining of the bitcoin then idea number two impact on the broader economy a survey that examines the potential economic economic impact of the halving on industries that are closely tied to cryptocurrency market such as mining and trading so we can survey traders in our second idea historical perspective a survey that analyzes the past performance of bitcoin in the month leading up to following lead, leading up to and following previous having events investor sentiment and i like that a survey that gauges the sentiment of investors and traders in the lead up to the having and how they expect it to impact the market so i think i'll be taking the, this one as a, as an example and have it and its impact on other cryptocurrencies this one is pretty cool as well and this ties into my third idea so this is a survey that looks at how the halving event is expected to affect other cryptocurrencies so we could ask traders and investors how they think other cryptocurrencies like ethereum xrp or bnb will be affected so basically all you need to do is to go to Facebook, type in crypto, select groups, and I would actually suggest to become part of a, an active private group. You can base your judgment on the frequency of the posts. posts. So, so the, frequent, the, the more frequent the post, the more active the group. But if you're short on time, you can choose one of these public groups and run a poll there. And again, I'll show you in a few minutes how I would go about visualizing the poll results. So idea number three is to use Google Trends because Google Trends is readily available and free. So I would ask ChatGPT to generate five research ideas about Bitcoin halving using Google Trends. And obviously you can use any topic instead of Bitcoin halving and listen to the suggestions of ChatGPT. One of the suggestions is to analyze the correlation between Google search interest for Bitcoin halving and the price of Bitcoin. You can study the regional differences. You can make a comparison of search interest for different cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And some of these would be irrelevant. Like number four, for example, it requires you to have another set of data, which is outside of the Google Trends, but still. And number five, investigating how the interest level in Bitcoin halving changes over time. So this is the easiest one, I guess, to implement. And again, if we go to Google Trends and ask something about the Bitcoin price, for example, as you can see, you get the standard graph, which is the interest in the search query. You get a regional split, so you can analyze the interest split by state. You can look at the adjacent terms or related terms, and you can basically mix and match everything here. 
and not many people know but you can get the data for news for youtube for web search separately and right now this is all for web search and now finally i wanted to share with you some of the examples so the first one was the bitcoin halving poll i actually ran a poll myself in one of the public groups and these were the results visualized by me so 47 percent of uh, the respondents thought that the bitcoin price would be under one hundred thousand dollars post 2024 halving 38% thought it would be more than $100,000, 10% more than $200,000, and 5% more than $300,000. So there are a few ways you can enrich this information and use this information differently. So basically you get a feel of the overall sentiments and the expectations of the group. You can compare the answers of the largest Facebook groups between one another. It would be interesting, I think. That would be interesting, I think. You can run the poll every three months to measure the momentum. So you may, you may start running your polls today and then do them in three month iterations and then compare the results. Or you can even compare this poll that I showed you on the previous slide with what top YouTubers and experts are saying currently and highlight any discrepancies, if any, and you can talk about that. So the second was expert opinion, and I screensh I made a screenshot of the output that I got. Uh, so I saved these three predictions, 50,000, 70,000, and 270,000 by 2028. So the way to present this data could be in a table format, where you have a column listing the price prediction, then the source, then the rationale behind it, so this one here is just a plain opinion. And this relates to a famous stock to flow model, for example. And this is, again, this is a draft. I would accumulate more data and make this table a fair bit more robust. But yeah, again, this is for inspirational purposes only. And now to the Google Trends. Google Trends is uh, quite interesting since you can do a lot with Google Trends. So the most basic variant would be to show you show the dynamics of a search query. So this is Bitcoin price index. And as you can see, the latest halving, which happened in 2020, occurred here, and the spike of the interest that followed. So you can measure the percentage gain. You can enrich this graph with the actual price of the Bitcoin and uh, measure correlation, for example. This would be interesting. But since we are not using any outside data in this example here, I didn't do that. So the second way to visualize the data would be to compare different search queries based on different cryptocurrencies. So we have BTC, which is Bitcoin, XRP, ADA, which is Cardano, BNB, and Ethereum. And these are their popularity indexes. And what you can do based on this data is to form a very simple correlation table, which you can do in Excel. And you can say that if I wanted to diversify my portfolio and my main, if my main cryptocurrency would be Bitcoin, then the safest, the second safest choice would be ADA. The third safest choice would be XRP because they are not correlated with Bitcoin that much. In a contrast to Ethereum, for example, which is highly correlated. So I could make this uh, argument here that if I wanted to diversify, so I'm not that dependent on the price of BTC, I would expand into ADA and XRP. And this is a very simple exercise. And again, if you want me to show you how to use Excel for these purposes only, uh, I could record uh, this video but again i'm not sure how popular <laughs> this is going to be and finally finally uh, i showed you the regional split and what if you, you buy state and what if you could analyze crypto scam and bitcoin price as your two main search queries and then you have this data expressed in a scatter plot so you can make some funny assumptions, say, for example, Nevada, California, and New Jersey are the most risky ones. They are looking for crypto scams, searching crypto scams, and searching Bitcoin price a lot. So this is the most volatile group. Uh, Connecticut, Oregon, Minnesota, Texas are a more down-to-earth 
guys, even though they're interested in the Bitcoin price. So Bitcoin price are searched a lot, but not as much as crypto scam. And again, these are not search volumes, these are popularity indexes. Uh, but you could uh, do the same for monthly volumes, for example, if it's not Google Trends. Then you have uh, South Carolina in Indiana, which is uh, you know, the states that uh, are searching crypto scams and are not searching Bitcoin price quite as much, meaning that uh, they are not likely to invest in anything. And then you have a bunch of these states here that are not interested in either. So these are not likely to be interested in cryptocurrency at all. So again, you can make some funny assumptions and some interesting conclusions based on this. So this was it. I'm not sure how interesting this topic is going to be. Everything that I showed you in this presentation, I mean the graphs and tables, took me maybe 30 minutes all in all. So this is not a long time. And you can scale this, you can outsource this if you can explain what you want. And let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this video was helpful. Subscribe, like, share, <laughs> and I'll see you next time.